everything they've built will fall. Oh shit! Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review X Men Apocalypse. So, X Men Apocalypse is the third installment in the X Men First Class prequel trilogy, and the film is still directed by Brian Singer, who also directed. X-Men, X-Men 2, and X-Men Days of Future Past. And the film has a long list of talents. James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Nicholas Holt, Oscar Isaac, Rose Byrne, Evan Peters, Sophie Turner, Ty Sheridan, Lucas Till, Alexandra Shipp, Olivia Munn. The list goes on and on and on. And the film is about when Apocalypse has risen, and now that Apocalypse is alive he has to form the four horsemen so that he and the four horsemen can go ahead and take over the world so it's up to the young generation of the x-men team to go ahead and stop apocalypse and the four horsemen now i was really excited for x-men first class personally because you know i've really enjoyed the x-men first class prequel trilogy i loved first class i loved days of future past even more which is still behind me after a couple of years i love days of future past it is my favorite x-men film of all time i wanted it to at least be a very fun and exciting movie and Damn it, that's what X-Men Apocalypse is. I had a very fun time watching X-Men Apocalypse. James McAvoy, he continues to be great as Charles Xavier. He still resembles Charles Xavier very well, and I still thought he did a very good job. Michael Fassbender still does a very magnificent job as Eric slash Magneto, and I really like how much depth that Magneto has. Like, of all the characters, you know, Magneto, Magneto being a villain, you actually feel the most sympathy for Magneto without going to any spoilers, of course, but I like what this movie did to Magneto. Some emotional moments that just Michael Fassbender handled very well, and when you see those emotional moments, it just shows why Michael Fassbender is honestly one of the best actors working today. He continues to be great. Jennifer Lawrence as Raven slash Mystique. I know she's been getting some criticisms in this film. Personally, I still feel like that she was really great as Mystique. I still really enjoy Jennifer Lawrence. Now, yes, granted, she's not Mystique a whole lot. She's more of Raven in this film. You barely get any Mystique in this film, but when she is Mystique, it's honestly pretty damn cool, and I still really like Jennifer Lawrence. Although I do feel like Mystique could have had a little bit more to do in this film, but really besides that, I still really enjoyed her. Rose Byrne from X-Men First Class is back here in Apocalypse, and I thought, once again, she continued to do a really good job in the film. Nicholas Holt is still great as Hank slash Beast. He's not really Beast a whole lot in this film, but it's still really nice to see him just becoming Beast. Evan Peters is awesome as Quicksilver. Quicksilver was awesome in Days of Future Past. Granted, not a big role, but he was still great, and he has an even bigger role here in X-Men Apocalypse, which makes me happy because I wanted to see more of Quicksilver in Days of Future Past, and you got to have more of that here. And just like in Days of Future Past, Quicksilver does get to have his own scene. Like, you know, the big Quicksilver scene? That scene was just so freaking entertaining. I loved the Quicksilver ultimate scene that was in this film. I honestly think that scene is just as funny, as entertaining as the scene in Days of Future Past. That was just one hell of a scene. That's just how you do it. And then you do have new additions, like you have Ty Sheridan as Cyclops slash Scott. I thought Ty Sheridan actually made a very good young Cyclops. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about him going into this film as Cyclops, but I thought he actually resembled Cyclops very well. Sophie Turner, I have to say, really stood out in this film. Like, what they did with her character was honestly awesome. I was 
very impressed with Sophie Turner as Jean Grey. I just thought all around she was fantastic. I loved her here and I can't wait to see her in honestly more of these X-Men movies because I honestly want to see more of young Jean Grey played by Sophie Turner after seeing X-Men Apocalypse. She truly was just freaking amazing. Alexandra Ship is really good as Storm. Olivia Munn is really good as Psylocke. Oh, and then of course, you can't forget about Cody McPhee as Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was seriously awesome in this film. I thought he really resembled Nightcrawler very well. He was very quirky. I thought he was a very funny character and just a very highly entertaining character. I definitely thought Nightcrawler was really great in this film as well. And then of course, Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. I thought he did a very good job acting in the film as Apocalypse. The makeup on Apocalypse honestly looked really great. I liked the look of Apocalypse and I thought Oscar Isaac, he was very unrecognizable here and he really pulled off a very good performance. The movie is also funny just like with pretty much all the other X-Men movies. There is humor in the film and the humor does work whenever it's added. That's the thing that makes these X-Men films fun, honestly, is whenever they add humor and they carry on that spirit here in X-Men Apocalypse. I really enjoyed the humor here. Brian Singer continues to do such a great job directing these movies. His direction is still just as strong as it was in Days of the Future Past, X-Men 2, and the first X-Men. Uh, Brian Singer at this point honestly knows what to do with this franchise. Like, he honestly understands what this X-Men franchise is all about and I thought his writing along with Simon Kinberg was honestly very well done. I thought the writing was very clever. The movie actually makes you think. It had some very powerful moments added to it. It basically add the ingredients you need to make a very engaging movie and I was definitely engaged for the majority of X-Men Apocalypse. I also think the movie is visually breathtaking. Uh, that shouldn't be a surprise honestly because these X-Men movies have really great special effects, but the movie still looks visually stunning. The action scenes, when the action's there, it is very action-packed and it looks really awesome. It's very exciting to watch. And it's just very cool just to see all of these younger generation of X-Men coming together side by side. The drama, the character moments, the way the story develops was also very great. That's the thing that makes these X-Men movies honestly stand out is the fact that it focuses more on like the character moments and that's something I feel like Brian Singer handles so well and it's no exception with X-Men Apocalypse. It should be no surprise to say that I still love the score in X-Men Apocalypse. It still sounds so beautiful. It still fits the tone of these X-Men movies and the score just continues to be breathtaking in my opinion. And of course the last thing I have to to say about X-Men Apocalypse is that the cinematography looks beautiful. Each of these X-Men movies honestly have really incredible cinematography and it's no different with X-Men Apocalypse. It's just thanks to the incredible cinematography that the movie just looks beautiful and the action scenes just look more clean and sharp. And then of course one particular scene which I'm not going to spoil. It is spoiled in the last trailer for X-Men Apocalypse so if you've seen that trailer you probably know what scene I'm talking about but if you haven't seen it don't worry I'm still not spoiling it. All I'm going to say is that I enjoyed this certain scene that was in X-Men Apocalypse. That was just so cool to watch. Now, some of the problems I did have with X-Men Apocalypse, personally, is that some of the characters were honestly very underused in this film. Like, you know, characters like Jean Grey, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, they've got to have their own time to shine. But with characters like Psylocke or Storm or Angel, they're all honestly very underused in this film. It's very cool to see them in action, but you don't really see them in action until really once you reach to the climax of the movie. They were still great for the scenes that they had, but I just wish the movie found a way to use those characters more. I also did feel like the climax, which as a whole was great. The climax was so exciting, but also emotionally investing at the same time. The climax as a whole was great, but the first half of the climax, I did feel like was 
a little bit too crammed. It was a little bit messy in the first half of this big action-packed climax because it would cut scene after scene after scene. Like you would cut one moment to Charles Xavier, then you, you would cut to a 30-second action scene with Psylocke and Beast, and then the other scene with Quicksilver and Mystique. Like, you know, you would cut to different scenes at once that the action falls short for every time it would cut to a different scene. But once you got to the second half, luckily, it was able to take its time with its action set piece and the pacing and overall editing got better from there. But I did feel like the first half, they were rushing through the action scenes just to focus on one scene after another, in my opinion. The movie does have some pacing issues as well. Like, after the opening scene of this movie, it does take a little while to get fully invested in the story. And I was still into the movie, don't get me wrong. I wasn't like absolutely bored out of my mind or anything. But it does take a little bit of time, I would say specifically the first 20 minutes, to get a little bit more into the story, if you know what I mean. It just starts off slow, and it's understandable because you need to set up all of these plot lines that you're going to see in this film. But in the first 20 minutes, I was going, okay, pick up the pace a bit. And there were a few parts in the middle section of the film that I did feel like was dragging a little bit as well. And as far as Apocalypse goes, he was very hit and miss with me, I have to say. There were honestly times where I was scared by Apocalypse because he was very threatening. But then there were other times where I didn't really think Apocalypse was menacing and I felt like the movie didn't really do much with Apocalypse overall. He definitely had his moments, but as a whole, I felt like the movie didn't use him as well as they could have. Oscar Isaac's performance was still great. Like for what he was given, he was still great. But when it comes to Apocalypse, he is very hit and miss with me. Some moments I like him, other moments I really didn't care for him as a villain. Overall, you guys, X-Men Apocalypse, I will say this, it is the weakest in the prequel trilogy. I don't think it's as good as First Class or Days of Future Past, but it was still a very fun movie. It was still a very solid movie. It was still very entertaining. It still brings the great things about the other X-Men movies, which is character driven moments, action set pieces when it's there, the direction, the writing being really good as well, and everyone still brings in a great performance. Whether they're underused or they have a big role in this film, everyone honestly still does a really good job in their roles. So I'm going to give X-Men Apocalypse three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about X-Men Apocalypse and what is your favorite X-Men film in the prequel trilogy, First Class, Days of Future Past, or Apocalypse. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!